I think I, I started to write because of pain, because of insult. And the pain of my father that I described to you, that this king who lost his, his crown and became shadow of himself. And uh, the second thing was that at the Hebrew University I felt as a Jews, Jew who come from Muslim country, uh, I felt outsider. I felt um, uh, even discriminated against. I felt that my uh, culture are um, not respected, the culture where I came from. I felt that I am, I don't know exactly the term to use, a type of second class a human being. And when I was student, I started to think, how can I change the attitude toward me and my culture? And I, you know, I spoke, I wrote, I was interviewed, I wrote articles, very happy. And so one day I thought, maybe I'll write a story. My father was a storyteller. My grandfather was a storyteller. My mother was a storyteller. And when my father wanted to convey a message to me, he never preached me directly. He would tell me a story. And the story itself has a lesson. So I said to myself, maybe I will tell a story. A story? Why not novel? Novel? Why not trilogy? What would be the trilogy? I knew at that time. A trilogy should begin in Iraq in order to uh, present myself. You know, this is a country of newcomers. You have here refugees and newcomers from 104 different countries speaking 84 different languages. Then the second thing that I thought about is the experience of a child, my autobiography, as a child in a kibbutz, which was an entirely two different world, myself vis-a-vis -vis the kibbutz. And the third part of the trilogy what will happen with this child after 20 years later, 30 years later? So at that time, I knew exactly what I want, the master plan. I started to write. I found out that I don't know Hebrew, as simple as that. I was, I was in a high position at that time in the government. Uh, I graduated the Hebrew University. I gave lectures in Hebrew. But when I started to write, I found out that my Hebrew is poor. That I don't have the literary Hebrew, so to speak. As how to write exactly what I want. Uh, to express feelings ideas, uh, to invent a dialogue, to have a drama, to compose the story, or to use the language, the rhythm of the language, the music of the language, to choosing the exact words that really hit you. And I started a new ordeal to master the literary language and to try to express myself in it. For me, 15 years, I think I wrote the first novel maybe 17 times. Yeah, I was not happy with it. So I rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it. It was an ordeal till I got to the, to the, 
to the position that I know that's it. I can't add anything and I can't uh, deduct anything. This is the story. That's what I, this is the best I can do. Uh, so this 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 uh, scapegoat came out. Tony Gokaparot in Hebrew. My dream was to publish in this publisher, Am Obed, which was the most prestigious publishers of that time, and maybe the largest one, I, if, if I'm not mistaken. And the dream was to publish there, not with the, you know. And the director of the publishing house was nice to me and he said, all right, your friend Lova opened the door for you, but now forget him. Let's find out if you have a book. And I was quite surprised to have a book. If I have a book, of course I have a book, but from his point of view. He said, we, we usually give the, uh, the um, books or the, to five lectors and they are the judge and, this, and he said uh, and uh, I would like to tell you that we reject nine out of ten handwriting that we got so do not be insulted and uh, uh, if we will uh, not accept your book. Maybe other publishing house will publish it for you. It means that it doesn't fit for us. I was frightened to death, you know. One from ten, and he gave me names of books that was rejected, big names of the country. Oh my God. I, I was interviewed once by so many programs on TV and they told me, how do you feel as a, as a celebrity overnight? I said, it's not me, it's him. It's him. And I always tell him that it is tonight and tonight is the end of it. That's it. So I, I think I had to, to uh, keep myself in proportion to not to lose myself and to take it into perspective which is rightly so, because it's nonsense. With all the lovely thing that you feel as known man, as, as a, 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 a famous man or whatever, it's nothing, it's like uh, water flowing, you know. The water is here, in five minutes it's there, you don't see it, the same water. It changed already, somebody else came. Somebody else take over. So what matters is to sit and to write word after word, sentence after sentence, to correct it and recorrect it. And if you have a good product, it will happen again. If you don't have a good product, it won't happen. You started to write or think about your trilogy and started to actually write the book. Yeah. Did you study the art of writing? Did you study the beginning, the middle and an end? Did you study the paradigm of writing? Did you seek out books about how to write? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You know what? Before I started to write, I wanted to do what you are saying right now. To study the art of writing, the laws of novel and the, the, the beginning, the end, and then the, and the middle, and all these type of stories. And I went to the library or to the bookshop and I bought, I, I don't know how many books I bought at that time about it. Everything I had, fortune. And when I started to read some of them, I was so frustrated so I threw them aside. You know what? When I brought the second novel, which was about Farewell Baghdad, which is a comprehensive one, 450 pages in Hebrew that comes to 600 pages in, in English or in, in German. And um, it was a big book. 
I was uncertain about so many things in the writing of the book, in the draft. The book was accepted and I had a meeting with two legendary editors of Amorved, the best editors of the country ever. Abraham Yabin and uh, Amatia Porat. And these people whom I was uh, frightened and had so respect for them sat there very happy telling me that they love the novel and they accept the book and they were going to publish it. And then I said, I have some fears. They said, about what? I said, first of all, the order of the chapters. They look one at the other and they say, the order of the chapters are fine? I said, really? Because I thought maybe the way of writing, because there are two voices there. They look one at the other and they say, Abraham said, Amatya, did you feel that? Amatya said, Abraham, did you? No, it's fine, it's understandable, it's very clear. And then I have some other nonsense. It was my fear. And then I said, a gentleman, I, I never studied literature. They said, it is your fortune. That's what Abraham Yabin said, a legendary uh, editor. Said, he told me, you know how to write a story. Those who study, they don't know to write one page. And you know, they, they cure me <laughs> in one sentence from this uh, inferiority complex that I'm not professor of, of, of uh, literature or I've studied literature. I try to make story from every uh, trivial thing that I find in, in the daily life. Yesterday you were with me. When I tell a story, I invent the story on the moment itself and it's based among uh, on uh, one, one, one practical thing that happened or one experience that happened or one picture that I saw and I invent something around it and I put content in it. But this is, this is it, it, goes, it goes without saying, that, that's part of me.